Hello and welcome along to a mini painting session that anyone of any age can do. I'm going to be using very few colours today, a limited palette of uh, ultramarine, burnt sienna, lemon yellow, black and cadmium red. And a selection of brushes and an A3 canvas board that you can see here. Uh, I haven't drawn anything out at all, um, so let's get painting. Wet the brush a little bit. We only want a damp brush with acrylics, not a wet brush. Um, and then I'll scoop up a big dollop of white paint. That's your technical term already. Careful not to paint my jumper. So this will help the acrylic paint move. And we're gonna go about halfway down. Let's get that on there. So we only want the paintbrush to be damp. We don't want it to be soaking wet. And if the paint feels sticky as I'm moving the brush along, I'm just gonna dip the tip or the corner of my brush into some water um, just to make it a little bit more fluid. So I'll be, I'm not gonna clean my brush. I'm gonna dip the tip in a bit of water and go in with a bit of ultramarine. That's, that's all, not much. And a few little blobs like that. Beautiful, isn't it? Let's see, crisscross motion. And the white underneath will make the ultramarine blend and lighten. It's titanium white I'm using. Um, so therefore it will give me a nice bleached out look. So if it feels sticky, don't forget, we just dip the tip of our brush in water. We don't want it overly saturated. Dangerously close to the cardigan. If it feels like it's drying, just scoop up a bit of white and a bit of blue. And move across. Now, it's a very rainy day here, but it is very warm and muggy. I've got low tack masking tape all the way around the edge. And the main reason is that is to protect me because um, I can be a little bit slap happy with my paint. So I've not cleaned my brush. I've just scooped up a bit more white so we can be a little bit paler as we get towards the horizon line, which is a little bit round about halfway. I imagine um, a little bit higher than halfway. So we've got a nice soft blend. So that white underneath was there to help the paint blend. So I'm not gonna clean that brush just yet. I'm going with a little filbert brush. Again, dampen that. And we'll just give the impression of a few little clouds with a fluffy top. And because the paint's still a little bit wet underneath, it will soften in and disappear into the base of the clouds. So we do the top fluffy bit first. And then blend that in. So you can see I'm going in a swirly circular motion. By doing that, it does mean I can get another layer in front and I want this to be nice and subtle. I don't want it to be like the weather is outside. Maybe we'll have another one over this side. Again, that swirly circular motion at the top and blend it in. We are going to have some water in this as well. Just clean off the excess bit of paint on my brush with another bit of a cloud. We don't want to go crazy. Something like that. Looking good so far. We can tell what it is, which is good. And then I'm going to go with a slightly smaller flat brush. This is a very old one. 
uh, it's seen better days, but we like to look after the old brushes and uh, we'll let it do some work so it feels useful. Going with some lemon yellow and a little bit of ultramarine. I'm just going to paint a line. Now, this won't end up looking like this because it's very bright. But this is just to help me know where everything else is going to go in relation to this. Keep a fairly straight edge if you can. But I'm not going to clean my brush again. I'm going to go in with a bit of ultramarine a little bit of cadmium red and some titanium white. So my brush is a bit dirty with green, but I'm making a, a bluey purple color on top. Now for that, I'm gonna do a few little hills. Again, if your brush feels sticky, just dip the tip into some water. And you can see, because I've got green on my brush, when I'm adding a bit more pressure, it just melts into the colour there and tones down the green because of the red that's in the purple. So I'm going to go in with a bit more white. And I think we'll have the light from the right today so the light is going to come from there so I'll just put a few little highlights and drag it across the direction of the mountain now this one I want further back so how to make that one further back is to push this one in front bit more red just to do a few slightly darker tones something like that I will give that little brush a clean because it's got a lot of uh, a lot of paint on there wipe it slightly and then I'm going to add I've still got the, the green that I mixed for this color is still wet on my palette so I'm going to mix more lemon yellow to that but I am going to add some of the purple and that will tone it down dull it down and make it more of a natural green now you can hear that I'm stabbing my brush on the palette just to splay the bristles a little bit to give me a little bit of texture The colour isn't mixed thoroughly, so it does mean that I've got lots of different shades all in one place on this brush. So each time I tap with not a lot of pressure, you can't hear that sound of the, the canvas, so it means I'm not putting a lot of pressure on there. Just gives it a nice little bit of highlight. Can let it go up the mountain a little. Maybe we'll have some trees in the background. Maybe. No, I'm not going to clean that brush for a minute. Let's go in with my little filbert that we use for the clouds. I'm going to add a bit of burnt sienna, just a touch of burnt sienna to my green to make a dull brown. This is where I have to be a little bit careful. Because we're going to have water. So we've got a nice dark water's edge there. Give that brush a clean. Maybe, maybe we will have 
a slightly darker green from ultramarine and lemon yellow with a little bit of that brown and we'll just do a few little lines in the background just to give us a little bit of texture I know I'm going to have something here I don't want to spoil the fun with that but there we go I go back with my original sky brush and there's a little bit of blue on there but you know if any of this goes wrong these are acrylics so it does mean you can paint straight over it when it's dry so don't panic and don't worry that what you've done isn't perfect also we don't want perfect Let's go with a bit of white. So the colours are going to be upside down from that sky. So it's paler there, darker there. We're going to go with ultramarine right at the bottom. And again, if it feels sticky, dip the tip into some water. And brush now. We're working with water. So all of our brush strokes have to be horizontal because water is horizontal unless it's a waterfall. I'm mixing a bit of blue and white on there. So this is starting to dry and that's all right. We don't mind that. I'm going to pick up a little bit of the greens that I've used. I'm just going to brush it downwards. Still got white on my brush, that's okay. Ooh, gone over that a little bit, that's fine. And then we'll put a little bit of the purple in as well. Little bit of purple. Give that a bit more of a faded point, a little bit. Not too much, because this is in the distance. We don't want to give it too much at all. So you can see I'm brushing down longer. Maybe put a little bit of green in front again. A little bit stronger. Like that. Just to give us a rough idea, I am going to clean that brush. And then if I use a nice large one inch flat, just a little bit of water, a little bit of white, And then just brush across horizontally just so it softens it so we know it's there and then I'll find a little brush a nice rigger with some white paint make the white paint like ink and just give us a bit of a waterline so you really need, it, it's a difficult struggle to get enough paint and enough uh, opacity of the paint. But you know, we've, we've managed it, so that's fine. We'll do a few little flicks of slightly stronger white there. 
Then I'm going in with the three quarter inch flat again, but this time some black. This is definitely a bravery test. There we go. Flick up a little bit. It's just a flat brush. This is nothing special. Just part of a, a brush set like that and then then we're going to come down like that you have to make the noise if you don't make the noise it doesn't work then i'm going to use the flat brush use the corner of it and then tap and tap and tap get wider with the tapping right down to the bottom. So we're just loading the brush up. Now, every tree has to have a little friend. So we will, um, a little short tree there. Corner of the brush at the top of the tree. You could use a fan brush for this. It would work quite well. You wanna leave gaps. Gaps really help with uh, a realistic looking tree. Let's go a little bit taller there. Something like that. So that's nice and big. Let's do a bit of stipple. It's picking up a little bit of the color from underneath and that's okay, because this is, um, keeps it natural. I haven't cleaned my brush. I pick up a bit of burnt sienna. We'll pop some of that in towards the water line. And then I, I'm going to go with a fan brush. Now, because this black is wet, I can go with neat lemon yellow because black and lemon make green. I know it's crazy. So I'm loading my fan brush, both sides. And we'll start at the top. And tap. Keep some of that black showing through. We did say the light was on the right, didn't we? So we'll make sure there's a bit more light on the right hand side of those trees. I'm not going to clean my brush. I'm just going to go into some more yellow. Load it up. Corner of the brush. And tap. But then if I go in with a bit of green, the green that we mixed with the lemon yellow, I don't want the grass to be the same color as the trees. So then we just tap away. The black is still wet underneath and that's fine if we flick up or you can bounce, look. You can tap or bounce depending on your preferred method of grass painting. Like that. Maybe a little yellow highlights, a little bit of yellow. To give us a bit of extra depth. Bounce it along. Then comes the reflection. So we've got our colors made. And then we'll start working with pulling down. Go a little bit murkier than this, I think, for the land. narrow it off a little bit you can see i've left little areas of light shining through let's go with a little bit of black on the brush for about there i reckon and there we'll just go left to right like that a bit more brown I don't clean my brushes a lot because I don't like to get the brushes too wet, you see. Something like that. Then if we go with our big one inch flat again, with a little bit of water, a 
we can brush across, wipe it off a little bit, go back in, just brush across a little bit more. So it just gives it that little bit of reflection. If we go back in with our rigger and our runny, runny, inky white or milky white, Do that and may oh you know let's let's use some of this green up with our rigger and just do some longer longer pieces of grass maybe just put some of that in the reflection as well so there we go a very simple painting um using just one two three four five colors and a couple of brushes. I'd love to see how you get on. Thank you. Happy painting. Bye bye everybody. Bye bye.